in this in this video we'll just talk about some um, miscellaneous limits that you might run into and uh, before we start um, I'd like to look at a couple of characterizations of the absolute value of x. The definition of an absolute value of x is that the absolute value of x is defined by the piecewise function, which is given by x if x is greater than or equal to 0, or the op or negative 1 times x if x is less than 0. A lot of books would just say the opposite of x, but I think that students, um, they they have a little trouble with that. I think they have a better understanding if you say negative 1 times x here, even though it means the same thing. All right, let's, let's just look at some examples. For instance, if x equals 3, the absolute value of 3 is equal to 3 itself, since 3 is greater than or equal to 0, x equals 0, the absolute value of 0 is equal to 0 itself, since 0 is greater than or equal to 0, and if x is equal to negative 5, the absolute value of negative 5 is negative 1 times negative 5, which is equal to 5, and that's since x is less than 0. So it works out uh, to the ideas that you had of the absolute value of x um, from the time you were in, al in algebra class. All right? In some sense, that you could sort of ignore the sign. We have to be a little more careful when we're dealing with variables because we don't know whether they're positive or negative, though. All right, a second characterization is this, that the absolute value of x is the square root of x squared. Now let's take a look at that and see that that's true. In this case, if we look at the, the at the square root of four squared, all right. Notice here, x is equal to four in this in this um, formula, and the square root of four squared is equal to the square root of sixteen. And the square root of 16 is, this is, of course, the principal square root of 16 is equal to 4. So notice when x is equal to 4, we got 4 back, just like the absolute value would have done to us. All right, if we have the x is negative 4, st should still get 4 back. Well, let's see what this does. The square root of negative 4 squared negative 4 times negative 4 is 16, it's the square root of 16, and that's 4. Notice this works just the same way as the absolute value does. Okay, let's uh, let's see how, here's a place where we'll use this. Let's consider this limit, the limit as x approaches positive infinity of the square root of x squared plus 1 over 5x minus 4. All right, well, in this, in this instance, what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the numerator and the denominator, sort of like we did with rational functions, but of this expression, all right, we have a square root, and notice the highest power of x is x squared. So I'm going to multiply by 1 over the square root of x squared in the numerator, and 1 over the square root of x squared in the denominator. This will be the limit as x approaches positive infinity of the square root of 4x squared plus 1 divided by the square root of x squared all over 5x minus 4 divided by, well, another way of thinking of this square root of x squared is this is the absolute value of x. All right. Now remember, remember properties of radicals, the square root of a divided by the square root of b is the square root of a over b. So the square root of 4x squared plus 1 over the square root of x squared is simply the square root of 4x squared plus 1 all over x squared underneath this radical. And in the denominator, since x is 
approaching positive infinity. As x approaches positive infinity, as it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, eventually it has to become positive and stay positive forever. So when that happens, if x is greater than 0, then the absolute value of x is x itself. So this will eventually be 5x minus 4 over x. Oops, over x. And now if we, we look at what we have here, this is going to be the limit as x approaches positive infinity of the square root. Well, we have 4x squared divided by x, which is 4. And we have 1 divided by x squared, which is 1 over x squared. All right, so this becomes what's the square root of 4 plus 1 over x squared. In the denominator, we have 5x over x, which is 5 minus 4 over x. As we take the limit, remember I can move the limit under the radical. All right, this, these, these terms with the x in the denominator go to 0. And so I'm left simply with the square root of 4 over 5, which is 2 fifths. Okay, so that's the limit as x approaches positive infinity. Notice that means that y equals two-fifths is a horizontal asymptote. All right, of this of this function. All right, let's take a look at the same function, but this time x is approaching negative infinity. We can do the same thing. Multiply the numerator and denominator by 1 over the square root of x squared. I, I won't go through all of the, this is quite as many details, but we'll have in the numerator the limit as x approaches negative infinity of the square root of 4x squared plus 1 all over x squared. Again, I left out a couple of details. I'm going to have to put in a couple more, though, in the denominator. The limit as x, as x approaches negative infinity in the denominator will have 5x minus 4 over the absolute value of x. Okay, now this is going to be in the numerator. We'll have the limit as x approaches negative infinity the square root of 4x squared divided by x squared is 4 plus 1 over x squared. And in the denominator, now we have to think about this as x approaches negative infinity. Eventually, x is going to be a negative number. And when x is a negative number, the absolute value of x is negative 1 times x. So we have to keep that in mind. And let's rewrite this now. This will be the limit as x approaches negative infinity of the square root of 4 minus 1 over x squared. And then 5x over negative x is negative 5 negative 4 over negative x is positive 4 over x. Again, all of these, all of these, these um, terms with x in the denominator will go to 0 as x goes to negative infinity. So I'm going to end up with the square root of 4 over negative 5, which is negative 2 fifths. So notice that negative 2 fifths is also y equals, I should say, y equals negative 2 fifths is also a horizontal asymptote. I'll abbreviate that HA, horizontal asymptote. Okay, let's take a look at another example. All right, in this example, we'll look at the limit as x approaches positive infinity of the square root of x squared plus 5 minus x. And this time, what I'll do is, and this often works, but this is something that you can try, is I'll multiply by the conjugate over itself. So the square root of x squared plus 5, all right, plus x over the square root of x squared plus 5, okay, plus x. 
and when I do that remember this is like a minus B I saw people multiplying this all out and and having some difficulty doing this on previous quizzes or exams times a minus B if we multiply this out and you can do this for yourself we get a squared minus B squared so when we multiply this out I should get the first squared minus the second squared and so this is going to be the limit as X approaches positive infinity of well, when I square this first part, I get x squared plus 5 minus the square of the second part, x squared. And this is all over the square root of x squared plus 5 plus x. Now the x squareds, the x squared subtract off, so I just have the limit as x approaches positive infinity. of 5 over the square root of x squared plus 5 plus x and of course as x approaches positive infinity the denominator approaches positive infinity so this limit would be 0 so it would be 0 all right but that's another technique all right okay there's uh, let's take a look at one more miscellaneous limit this is the limit as x approaches positive infinity of 1 minus e to the x over 1 plus e to the x. Notice these e to the x's are approaching positive infinity. They're sort of like the highest degree terms in those rational expressions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that this one here does not go to infinity, and I'm going to multiply by on the denominator 1 over e to the x, and then here in the numerator 1 over e to the x. And when I do that, I'll get the limit as x approaches positive infinity of, let's see, 1 over e to the x minus 1, all over 1 over e to the x plus 1. And we can think of this, I'm going to write this another way, um, although you wouldn't have to. I think you can see that as x goes to infinity, e to the x goes to infinity. All right, and so these two terms will go to zero. But let me just insert this just to keep this in mind. As x approaches positive infinity, this is e to the negative x minus 1 over e to the negative x plus 1. And notice as x goes to positive infinity, the exponent here is going to negative infinity. And so since it, it's at, when the exponent on e goes to negative infinity, it goes to zero. So I'm just going to get zero minus 1, same deal in the denominator, 0 plus 1, the result will be negative 1. Okay, so here are some limits, uh, some miscellaneous limits that I hope will help you out. If you have questions, of course, let me know. Thanks. Bye now.